Welcome to our FX Masterclass, and my name is Ernest Rowe. Today's topic is the total disassembly of the FX Wildcat MK3. All the tools required for the assembly is listed down below. Hey, let's begin. All right, first things first is safety. We gotta make sure this gun is degassed. The only way to do that is by removing the dust cover. This will expose the gauge. And you need an 11 mil Allen, I mean an open end wrench. It has to be milled down so it goes in a little a narrow gap so you can grab the hex behind the gauge. And you just loosen it, crack it, and you hear bleeding. Since this is already degassed, but you hear bleeding, you hear the air, and stop, and wait till totally you don't hear any more air coming out. And you can wiggle the gauge side to side, there's no pressure. All right, while it's bleeding, we could disassemble or remove the stock. All right, we need a, a three mil ball allen. All right. There's only two screws holding the stock on, and this one's a little tricky. It's in an angle, and slowly lift up the stock up like that. There you go. Now, next one is we're removing the cheek rest. This be also, I think is a three mil, yeah. Hey, we're going to pull out the barrel. So there's one screw that's holding it in place. Just a couple turns. And usually this plug to make sure there's only half a turn on it. There you go. Now, make sure there's no pressure in the gun and the gauge is kind of just no pressure behind it. So it's, it's okay to remove, unscrew the air tube. Before you can do that, there's two set screws here for the air tube clamp. You should loosen those, just a couple turns. Then it's better to grab the, this rear action and turn it. All right, now we're going to remove, it's called this uh, trigger rail support here, where the stock screws on. That piece needs to come off. Mm, I believe it's this size. And lift it up, comes out like that. Now we're going to remove this trigger assembly so we could yank, separate the trigger linkage so we could separate this forward section off. Now we're going to remove uh, this pin here and hold on to it, push it down on it and push the pin and you'll see it come out. And the spring wants to pop out, so that's why you gotta hold it down. And here's a trigger assembly. Now this, we gotta remove this L bracket for this trigger. Flip it over, this is a little teeny hole there for the pin, you gotta push it out.
could be a little tricky at times. Some are tight, some are. See, it's loose already, so the gauge is in the way. I have to push it the other way out. There. Some of it requires a little tweezer. Get it out. Make sure. Pin. When that's removed, you could. The L Allen ones come up and remove this little spring here behind it. Yeah. All right, now we're going to loosen these two screws here. Could pry it open like that, and your whole router cell may come out. Try to keep this intact in one position. Because this piece here doesn't require a disassembly unless it's something damaged on it. Now we're going to remove the power wheel. Make sure you use uh, don't use a ball allen for this. Right. Keep pressure on the power wheel down because there's, there's a spring loaded ball there that wants to inject the wheel. When it's loose, slowly separate. Keep a track of the ball bearing there. It's just held on by uh, maybe silicone grease. Keep that together. And underneath where the ball sits is a spring. You could remove that so it won't lose it. It's that small. All right. Now we're going to remove the probe. All right. It's this hole here. And slowly go all the way down. Well. Since this router is removed, you gotta move the route back and forth till you still see a little screw in there. And unscrew it. When you feel it's no longer any threads there, it's no longer moving, kind of to shake it out and look like that. It look like the crown probe set screw. All right. Then uh, you can call them out this way, kind of hold on to it like that. If it doesn't gravity come out, there's the probe. So you want to change caliber. That's the procedure to remove your removable probe. All right. Now here's your hammer spring adjuster. It's just free floating in there. So it's common to, to hear if the gun is not cocked, you hear this. When you go down, it, it falls down. It's a free floating hammer. So this piece is loose, so that's normal. All right. Hammer spring adjuster. All right. Now we can remove the spring, hammer spring. All right, to remove the, of course, hammer weight will come out. Then this is your uh, sp spring guide hammer weight combination. The actual hammer can't remove it till we remove the lower shear because it's blocking it. All right, to do that, we'll push this pin, the bottom one, to the rear. It come out. All right, then you remove the second hole here. 
with that pin. It's a safety stop with that shear. Then you can wiggle it. Of course, the hammer will fly out. That's the hammer we want to remove. Plus a shear right there. All right. Now, this cocking handle can be, you can slide it off. All right. This is your cocking pin. It's really recessed, only sticks out so much. So you can't really break that. That's the one that grabs the hammer and cock it. All right. All right, this the end cap for the air tube. If you can't loosen it by hand, you need to get a 15 mil wrench onto this nut here. Yeah. This piece is sealed by this o-ring here from the action. All right. Uh, this piece is separate. It's sealed by a dowdy seal from this piece here. And here's your nut for your valve retainer. I believe that's uh, uh, 11, 11 mil. This uh, valve retainer is sealed by this one o-ring here. And there's another o-ring down here to seal the valve pin. There's a spring here, it keeps the valve shut. And here's the actual valve pin. There you go, valve pin. Now there's a, a metal removable seat in here. That's a tricky guy to get out. I got a little tool here, usually it works, but uh, kind of spring loaded and catches the lip of the valve seat. Just, I usually squeeze it down until it fits all the way back of it. All the way to the back. Then keep it horizontally aligned. Then I have another piece that keeps it from spreading back in while I'm trying to pull it. Bear with me. Yeah, usually I have this on a vice, but and there's your valve seat. It just clamps onto the back of the seat so you can pull it out to take it back out, you need to close it back in. So little neat little gadget, huh? Well anyway. Now the last part, we're going to remove the regulator is in here. There's a little spacer here. This, uh, I guess, separates the regulator from the action to this is actually your plenum space. All right. Now you need a little big ball allen. A fit is a hex fitting down here. It's brass. It fitted on there. It, this works like 99% of the time, but when you're actually trying to turn it clockwise, have a little friction on the nut and turn it and pull at the same time. It just pops out. But anyway, that's how you got the regular route. All right, now we're going to remove the end cap assembly because there's a check valve in here. I need to show you in case it leaks because when you pull the fill probe out, if you hear a little leaking here, you need to reseal your check valve. So we're going to do that. Take that up out. Usually uh, stick something down there to turn it, 
Break it loose. Usually it's not hard to remove. But... Right. And when you put back this together, you don't really go to town and tighten the heck out of it. You're going to have a hard time removing it. All right. Here's your check valve. And use it. I got a Torx head in it. I'm going to remove it. I'll show you what it looks like. And what do you get is uh, the countersunk screw with the O-ring in there. There you go. FX Wildcat MK3 fully disassembled. If you have any questions or comments, drop me a line below. And we'll catch you next video. And detailed reassembly of the Wildcat MK3.